All right, I'm going to go through your Spedica one at a time. You can skip through the number you want. Let's go. The graph is shown below which of the following statement about g is true. So two things going on. First, asking about whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So as you can see, it's going, it's a negative slope, so it is decreasing. Um, this is a little new increasing rate, decreasing rate. I'm adding one more thing that's the synonym of it. So remember, we talk about concave up. That is same as rate of change is increasing. I'm going to add one more time. That is also same as it is increasing rate. Okay, so when it's, it makes sense, right? Rate of change is increasing, increasing rate, the same thing. So that's English class. All right, so now I'm looking at it. Does it look like it's a concave up or concave down? That is concave up, so it's decreasing it, increasing rate. Increasing means concave up. Okay, number two. Which of the following describes uh, B to C? So here, right here, um, it's going down. So the function is decreasing. It is the upside down part, so it is concave down. Another way of saying concave down, rate of change is decreasing or at decreasing rate, just so far. Right? Number three, which of the following statement about the end behavior of H is correct? Um, so we did this more of like a whiteboard practice. You have to, this in order for me to know the end behavior, left hand and right hand, you have to remember the arrows, right? So you need two things, the sign of the leading coefficient and even degree or odd degree. So I have to pick and choose the one that's gonna give me the largest exponent, right? So I'm gonna go negative two x times x squared times x cubed. So let me write it here. That is my, yeah, stop please. So I'm going to give negative 2x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 power plus, I don't care about the rest. Negative leading coefficient, so that means my right hand goes down. Degree 6 even, so down and down. So left end behavior goes down, right end behavior goes down. Okay. This one is a little new, isn't it? Um, you have two functions going on, g of x over here and p of x on the graph. We are looking for the average rate of change of p of x, so the graph. This is the graph. That's your a, that's your b. Let's plug in our formula first. So p of f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Why did I write P? Because technically the function is P, not F. I mean, you could have written F and figure out what that is. Same thing. Uh, negative, negative. I get 2 in the denominator. Numerator, how do you find F? P of 0. you got to look at the graph, okay? So when X is 0, what's the Y value? 0. So P of 0 is 0. And then minus, what about P of negative 2? When X is negative 2, what's the Y value, folks? Open circle means there's nothing there, so you've got to look at where, where's the point. It's going to be this one right here, so y value is 3. So we got negative 3 over 2, or negative 1.5. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, g of x, the piecewise function. That is a, that is b. Let's plug it in. g of b minus g of a, oops, negative 1, divided by b minus a, negative, negative, I get 4 in the denominator, numerator, g of 3. <clears throat> um, be careful over here. So g of 3, which one am I going to use? We're going to get more into this after the benchmark. This is called piecewise function. So 3, you have to pick which one you're using. Now you tell me, is 3 less than 3 or 3 greater than equal to 3? 3 is greater than equal to 3, so we're going to use a second equation for 3. So when I plug it in, it's going to be 3 squared plus 2, that is 11. Minus, what about g of negative 1? Where does negative 1 fall into? Is negative 1 less than 3, negative 1 less, greater or equal to 3? Less than 3, so we're going to use the first one for negative 1, so 4 minus 2, negative 1, which you get 6. <clears throat> so I get 5 fourths there. Number five, this is even function. Even function means x change the sign, y's are the same. So let's look at it. <clears throat> I got negative six comma negative four. I got six comma c better be negative four because y has to be the same. Uh, I can't use this one. 
because I don't see any negative 5 as a y value. However, look at this. These two, negative 3, comma 5, and what, comma 5. <clears throat> Ys are the same, so x better be the opposite sign, so negative 3, 3. Negative 2, comma 1, 2, comma 1. We're adding a and b and c, so 1 plus 3 minus 4 is 0. Folks, remember these are x, comma y. Next. Oh, this is a little tricky. All right. Uh, letter A and B is talking about rate of change. So let's see. Rate of change is positive or negative. Rate of change is positive means positive slope. Ne rate of change negative means negative slope. This is going down. So rate of change is negative. So not this. And what about the rate of change increasing and decreasing? Increasing, decreasing, that has to do with the concave up and down. This is concave down, so rate of change is decreasing. B. That was easier. Why not C and D? Let's see. C, function H is negative. Folks, if function is negative, it has to be below the x-axis. This is above, so that is false. Same reason. Number. Should I make another video? No, I'm just kidding. Number seven, I'm looking at the end behavior, folks. This is up and down, right? So that tells me two things. The sign of the leading coefficient has to be right hand, negative, and twos are the opposite, so it's got to be odd degree. So we're kind of working a little backwards. So negative leading coefficient, I mean, yeah. Let's see. Well, that one has a positive, so I'm going to get rid of it. A and B and C has a negative. Now let's find the degree. X. So this is going to be negative x times x times x squared. I got negative x to the fourth power. This one, I got negative x times x times x. I got negative x cubed. This one, negative x squared times x times x squared. I got negative x to the fourth power. Odd degree. Which one gives you odd degree? Letter B. Okay. All right, number eight. Uh, we're talking about concave up and concave down. So first thing first, is your input increasing equal length interval? Yes, it does. It's all four. That's good. What about my output? Negative five, negative eight, negative five, negative two, negative one. All right, I'm going from negative eight to negative five and negative two and negative one. Is this increasing or decreasing? This is increasing. The number is getting bigger. So rate of change is increasing. So concave up. Let's look at the reason. Because average rate of change over the consecutive equal length interval values are positive. Because average rate of Folks, what is letter A saying? Letter A saying because average rate of change is positive. That means it's a positive slope. That does not make it concave up. That's why A is wrong. B is saying that average rate of change is increasing. Same as concave up. Okay? Number nine. Talk about zeros. All right, so let's find zero. The first one, x equals zero with the multiplicity of a two. That one. Let me just set it equal to zero and then show you what happened quickly. Subtract four, square root both sides, plus or minus. I get plus or minus two i. This one, I get x is equal to three with the multiplicity of a three. That one, I get x is equal to one with the multiplicity of one. I know it didn't ask you, but let's look at it. So how many distinct real zero? One. Two, three. Three distinct real zero and two non real zero. Two imaginary solutions. So three distinct, two real, non zero. There you go. Number 10. And a notation. This one has a, oops, you need a sign char. Find all your zeros. I got x is equal to zero, x is equal to negative four, x is equal to seven. I'm going fast. So if this is too fast for you, you need to stop and look at it. All right, so I put my all my zeros. I divide it up, pick a number in each interval. So let me try negative 5 over here and plug it in to determine the sign. So negative 2, negative 5, negative 5 plus 4 cubed, negative 5 minus 7 to the fourth power. So that's a negative times, negative times, negative cubed is negative. Any number to the fourth power is always going to be positive. So I got the negatives. Pick a number, negative 1. Plug it in, so negative 2, negative 1 plus 4 cubed, negative 1 minus 7 to the 4th power. You don't have to write this out on your test. I am, because I want to show you. That's a positive. A number to the 4th power positive, that's a positive. The number 1, negative 2 times 
positive one times. Do you see what I'm doing? Now I'm just plug it in. It's a negative eight. <coughs> Where am I plugging? I'm plugging right here to the original factor form, by the way. Negative, positive, positive, positive. I got negative. All right. What am I looking for? I'm looking for less than zero. Do I want my zeros or no? No. So open circle on my zeros. I also want less than zero, so I want the negatives. So here, here, here. So where is that? Negative infinity, negative 4, 0 to 7, 17, positive infinity, letter T. All right, determine the least possible degree of the following polynomial. Make sure your x is increasing the same equal length interval. My y plus 0, plus 4, plus 7, plus, what is that? Can't, what is it, 9? <laughs> Plus, what is that? 12, 12, 10? Am I doing it right? Okay. That is plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. That is plus minus 1. Minus 1, minus 1. So this is going to be cubic. Equal length interval plus 2. Minus 4, minus 2, plus 0, plus 2, plus 4, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Quadratic. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. Minus 5, minus 2, plus 1, plus 5, plus 11. Plus 3, plus 3, plus 4, plus 6. Oh, yeah, there's a second. Can I do it right? Plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 1, plus 1. There we go. So, linear, quadratic, cubic, fourth, quartic. Plus 1, plus 3, plus 5. Be careful over here, guys. Plus 7. Input is not increasing intervals. Um, it's equal interval. So, I can only check whether it's a linear or not. Right? So, let's check whether it's a linear. Average rate of change, x, 1. 2 over 3, 1. 5 over 5, 1. So it is a first linear function. Be careful on letter D. All right, the video stops in two minutes. I gotta work quick. The polynomial has a do, 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 do. what is the least possible? So x has a multiplicity of a 2. x plus 4 multiplicity of a 3. If you have 2i, that means you better have negative 2i. 5 minus 3i, you better have 5 plus 3i. Those are the complex conjugate, least possible degree. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that it? All right, I'm done with that. The calculator section, I already made a video of it, so make sure you watch it as well.